Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Man, I'm breaking them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, I'm going to have on the founder and CEO of StormX, Simon Yu. And usually we do like a couple of stories, and then we bring in uh, the uh, the guest, and then we talk to him for a little bit, and then we kick him out of here. But uh, today, I just want to really dig into what this all is. We've already talked about the news. Uh, Dogecoin is going to the moon. I think it's going to be very bad for this space as things start to drop off. Also, we talked about how Turkey is trying to ban cryptocurrency. Good luck. Didn't work out well for India. And uh, that's really the big thing that, that is going on. So for StormX, just so you know, I own StormX, just like everything I talk about on this channel. Everything I talk about, I own. And you know why I talk about it? Because I'm biased. And that's just the truth. So with StormX, uh, I got in this because Alex Mascioli said, look, this thing actually does something. And I was like, what does it do? And he says, well, when you download the app, you can actually get crypto cash back. And I'm like, who cares? Because other other ones do that, you know. You got the uh, the fold uh, the fold app card. You've got uh, Rakuten, Honey. I'm not sure if they do that or not, but uh, I'm like, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of that stuff, right? And he goes, Yeah, genius. But what's great about StormX is that you can hold it, stake it at 15%, and the more StormX tokens that you hold, the more uh, crypto cashback you can get when you're actually buying things. And then Ryan over there at uh, TTC, a traded chain, said, yeah, I bought some Adidas. This was like a couple months ago. I bought some Adidas, and because of the appreciation of the StormX token, because he holds so much, he goes, the shoes are pretty much free. And I was like, now we're talking. So anyhow, I wanted to show you this on my phone, because this is how you're going to actually look at it. This is how you can actually download it. So just so you know, I'm just going to go over here and go to token. And then just so you know, also on the very top, the website is stormx.io. I will link in the description so you don't go to some scam website. But here is the whole tokenomics real quick. Actually, hold on. What I really want to do is I want to go to memberships. The token, I just pretty much explained it to you. So here's it. To get a bronze membership, you need 3,000 Stormx. Right now, Stormx is about six cents, somewhere around there. So it doesn't take a lot. Uh, for 1.25x, that's what you get. For silver, you need 31,000 Stormex, you get 1.5x. Gold, you need 30, 310,000. You get double the cashback rewards and a 25% reward time reduction. I think the reward time, I think it's like 45 days to 60 days. Some, maybe it could be 90, I can't remember. But uh, yes, when you buy things, you do get crypto cash back. It just takes a little bit of time. But as you level up, it takes a little bit less time. 2.5x for platinum, that's if you have over 3 million Stormex baller 50 percent reduction and diamond is three and a half x and 75 percent reward reduction but that's like 6.2 million uh storm that's a lot i'll have to ask i'll have to talk to simon about that anyhow so when we're here and we're taking a look at the at this at the actual website on our phone you just click on where you want to download it to. I've got, this is an iPhone. I'm going to click the App Store. I also have it on my Chrome browser. And what's cool about that is if you ever go to any website where StormX is actually accepted because they have 750 partners, it'll just pop up and go, you get 6% at Nike or you get 10% at ESPN Plus or whatever else comes up. So it's kind of cool. You're just doing this like, oh, I can get some free stuff. I'll do that. So I'm just going to click on the App Store. It actually just takes me to my the actual uh, app because I already have it downloaded. And at first, in all honesty, I wasn't too impressed with this because I'm like, well, this kind of sucks because they just lost Walmart. And Walmart goes in and out. And I'm like, that's where I do a lot of my shopping. So that's a bummer. Then I take a look at Albertsons and all of Albertsons. And I was like, well, anything else you got? They had Kroger in here. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I had Sam's Club. So I'm like, great. And what's great about this is that this is where I think the magic is. If you're looking for a specific item or something like that, or you want to search a store, you can search the store for whatever it is, but I like this shop by category because like, look at this right here. Like there's things that I would never really even think of. Okay, electronics, let's try this. Samsung. So when you go here, it'll just tell you, look, there's exclusions, but you get like 4% cash back and you just activate the crypto on your phone. And then when you're shopping and you actually buy and you check out, they will send you uh, the crypto cash back. So like Samsung's pretty well known. What else is here? I don't know what OnePlus is. Scout Alarm, Sharper Image, that's pretty, yeah. White Technology, what else they got? Alcohol, you can order wine.com, sure, I guess. Beauty, <laughs> Benefit Cosmetics. Like again, these are things that you would never think about. And that's why they're here because they partner up with uh, StormX and go, hey, put us on here so you can, you know, we can give you some discounts and pay. And then they, you know, separate those two and they give you the rewards. And uh, that's pretty much how StormX makes it. It's how you make it. So I'll do this. It's pretty good. Activate crypto back. And then off and off it goes, right? So 
again, I think the big difference here is that first you can actually stake some things. And actually, let me show you this. So when you click on staking on the app itself, 15% just to stake StormX. So now you get crypto cash back, you know, you can also stake it for 15%. And then, so that part's awesome. Just so you know, you're gonna have to use the trust wallet, which is down here, or see how it's, it's lighting up uh, your MetaMask wallet and you can stake it. A lot of the places where you wanna be able to get uh, StormX the token, uh, Voyager has it, Binance and some other places, I'll link them in the description as well, but it's pretty simple to do. Also the rewards, just so you know how this works. If you wanna do this, so the more, like we talked about, the more StormX you have, you just click on the, where it says join now for free. And it says, connect your wallet. And you can verify your wallet, however it is. Like, let's see here, verify wallet. Ah, right here. Any wallet with a Web3 enabled browser. I'm gonna use that because I have uh, the Brave one. So it's having to copy, it says, uh, copy and paste the URL. I'm gonna copy this. Let me see here. Let me go back. And here's the browser itself. I got nothing. And then, uh, so I'm gonna put this in. <clears throat> I'm gonna paste this into the, and there it is. Let me try this again. And then let's put it on this ledger. Ooh, I got two ETH now, the one. So next, connect, sign. And uh, that's pretty much it. So now all I gotta do is just transfer everything from uh, Voyager over to here. Let's hope that works out, Steve. And uh, that's the big thing. So that is pretty much StormX in a nutshell. And uh, the questions that I have now is for Simon, which, oh, and then real quick, let me show you this. If you're really bored and you wanna fill out some surveys, they also give you crypto right here in the play, the play section. I think that's a big deal, but whatever. But uh, the questions that I have is, this looks like it actually does something. It has some utility, it has some function. The question I have for Simon is, um, well, we know how it differs from the other ones. What's going on right now? How are they going to improve this and bring more stores into it? Because like Rakuten, that has like 750 stores, right? Honey's already been purchased by um, PayPal. So that's all we're already there. Um, StormX looks to be very global. So what's going on right now? Where are they going to be in the next year, three years, five years? And then I just want to give his opinion on uh, Dogecoin as well. So let's jump in and talk to Simon. All right, everybody. So great. So Simon is here to set us straight. So we know exactly what uh, StormX is, what it does, and how it all works. Thanks, Simon You Thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Let's get down to it. What? Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. This is great. So look, so StormX, what are we doing here? What are you guys doing right now? What's going to happen in the next year, three years, and five years? Is it all just a big progression or like, are there some big things coming on? Yeah. I mean, uh, everything is, you know, progressing based on stages, right? So we've been, yeah. you know, building this company for about seven years, which ultimately all flow into uh, creating a marketplace for earning. And so we start out with micro tasks where you can do surveys, you know, check out yeah. the products and all that stuff. And then uh, we added shopping and cashback. We boosted that even further with the rewards cashback. And then we added staking. And now we're launching this debit card, which we're really excited about. Uh, and then, you know, like you said, in a few years down the line, we plan on launching gigs, which is the you know freelance marketplace so people can create their own jobs as well, too. So, uh, yeah, overall, all the products that we're building is just, you know, how can we get a single platform where you're anywhere, you know, anyone could come from regardless of what country they live in and just find different ways to earn money online. Yeah, cool. So I remember you, we were on Alex's show and you were talking about some VC was talking about this is the next trillion dollar company. And I was thinking to myself, that's crazy. However, I mean, using the app and everything else, but when you talked about the, the whole gigs thing, I was like, I don't see it. And then I saw another interview that you did where you talked about how you guys have a patent where you're able to actually transfer funds, tra transfer cryptocurrency for like next to nothing. Mm -hmm. so, so real quick, talk about that. Because I think that might be the big game changer and one of those things in your arsenal. Yeah. Um so I, I don't know if you guys, uh, if you've ever used like prepaid phone cards back in the days, but, you know, coming oh, yeah. from, you know, Asian immigrants, right? So, um, you know, my family, we used to always use prepaid phone cards to call relatives halfway across the world, right? It was just really expensive to call anyone, no. you know, but, 
yeah, but nowadays because of you know voice over internet like VoIP technology, we use Skype and Facebook and you know Line and WhatsApp and all these communications. So it, it's to yeah. talk to someone halfway across the world, it's free. We just we just don't think about it. But until that technology came about, it it was expensive, but we're sort of seeing the same trend happening with blockchain with payments, right? So it still costs an arm and a leg to send someone, you know, uh, like even like $5 to someone halfway across the world using a wire transfer. If you're in India or China or Korea or something like that, or in Europe, it would cost you a hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Because the wire transfer fees, foreign transaction spreads and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, what we've really identified back in the early days when Bitcoin was a little bit more scalable too, was that like being able to send value across for like pennies and dollars did not make sense in the past, but now it does. And like, we've, we've been one of the early adopters to be able to, you know, hone in on this technology. So Hmm. yes, like a few dollars to watch a game, like watch a survey or, I mean, uh, do a survey or watch a video or do something like that might not have made sense in the past, but to someone like in India or, you know, emerging countries, it does make a lot of sense. Or somewhere in Europe or US, if you're trying to hire someone halfway across the world, without all these fees, all of a sudden this global marketplace becomes like for talent, it doesn't matter where you live anymore. And we've seen that huge shift shift this year, especially with COVID, uh, everyone working remote. And now, you know, you see a lot of traditional tech companies too, that's hiring from Europe and some countries in Asia, for example, and people in those countries getting to work for US companies. But this is just the beginning, right? So there's so many jobs out there and a lot of it is just being shifted online. Uh, and so there, there's a huge untapped marketplace that hasn't been able to be penetrated yet just because the payment process was so expensive and that's where we can disrupt. I got to tell you, man, it makes a lot of sense now that I'm listening to it. And now if you really think about it, this all started off with an idea, right? You were a poor college kid. You want to save some people some money in blockchain. You did that in 2014 moving forward. You started off with crypto cashback awards. Now you're moving into this area. You know what it sounds like to me? It's almost, and not to, not for hyperbole and really go off case, but Amazon was all about books. Like, look, we're going to do a ton of books. We're going to give you all the books that, that you can possibly use. And we're going to put it all in one place. Then all of a sudden they branched off into another department, then another department, another department. I always talk about uh, investing into people, and that's why I'm happy that you came on, Simon. Because look, it's not just about an idea or what's going to happen. It's actually about putting these things together. So you got a good a good people, good group together, and it's not about what you what you what you know. It's about who you know. And you guys have how many partnerships with how many different uh, organizations now? I think we have like close to a thousand stores now. Yeah. (laughs) All right, that's enough, man. That's that's awesome. A lot more is coming though. (laughs) Okay. So I just wanted to put a, so everybody here who's already watched the the, the first half of the video, look in the description below. There's going to be a link. You can download StarMax. You can take it for a test run. You can see how much uh, crypto cashback you can save. Also the rewards and also, I mean, all the things we talked about staking, uh, doing those, uh, those surveys and everything else. So just take a look. And then my goal, my goal, Simon, is to start to use your app a little bit more so I can buy some things that I want to buy. I was, yeah. like, I, like I said in the video, I was kind of ticked off that you guys lost Walmart, but I'm hoping that you yeah. guys get them back. So the last two questions I have for you is this. One is, who is your ultimate store to actually land? The ultimate, ultimate store is to actually get to save people a ton of money. And the yeah. last thing is, we in Alex's show, you talked about charity and giving back any kind of plans with that for StormX, and I'll let you I'll let you get out of here and do the magic that you do. Yeah, so uh, I, I do want to put a quick disclaimer though for the gigs part. You know that's still in a couple of years out, oh, so yeah, we're not yeah, building yeah. it. But yeah, uh, right now our focus is around the debit card that's building, uh, sort of disrupting fintech right now. It's just it's it's gonna be pretty awesome. But um, yeah, the number one store definitely is Amazon, uh, and you know it's unfortunate because they're so close to us and. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the reasons why it's so hard, uh, so until last year, their program was a lot more flexible, but then, uh, I think they started making a lot of money because everyone started ordering everything from Amazon. So <laughs> they sort of have all the power in the court. So, but, um, yeah, but that's a, like sort of, you know, when I first started the company as well too, or, or not, not just this one with, uh, Tony Calvin, but, um, my first one with the food truck is just, you know, plenty of people told me that I was going to fail. Right. So like eight, they told me like 80% of the small businesses fail within the first few years. Oh, everybody says uh, that. Just give me that statistic. But you know, for me, I was always thinking like, okay, then that means 20% of the people actually succeeded. Like how, I wonder how those guys succeeded. So I try to do, you know, try, try to do more research online and then try to, you know, get some coffee meetings and try to learn from the people that actually succeeded. And, you know, there's, 
a lot of problem solving involved and trying to figure out, okay, most people can't figure out how to do it, but we can. So I, uh, we're working on it. I think we've got some creative <laughs> solutions too, uh, which, yeah. you know, should be exciting. And if we can launch that, I think it'd be uh, definitely a lot more adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second, yeah, regarding the charity stuff too, I mean, um, yeah, just going back to my college days, uh, I, I, I got to the point where I just didn't have enough money to eat food, like on a regular basis. And then like, uh, I was working at Bank of America as a teller at that time. And I was, you know, trying to start this taco delivery business. I still had, didn't have enough money for rent. And so like my coworkers would be like, Hey, let's go to lunch. And I would just say like, Oh, I can't I have to do homework or something. And I would just take a nap instead. Cause it's like, I didn't have money. So I, remember. Like, I think, Those yeah, days. I mean, there, there's a lot of you know good reasons as to why people need money, but I think the basic human like just need is food, uh, and so like I've really been uh, trying to focus on donating to like uh, yeah local food banks and stuff like that too, but really trying to make sure that no one goes hungry, you know. So like just for me personally too, if like a homeless person asks like, hey, do you uh, can you buy me some food? Like I, I never turn them down. Like sure. if it's money, I, I think it's I have to see like what the reasoning and stuff like that, but. Uh, I, I think the basic yeah, need is definitely everyone needs to be able to eat and then they can you know, sort of find different opportunities. So that's it right there. Yeah. We'll talk after. I'm going to introduce you to, to Kiba.org. That's the one that we always donate to for our Cardano stake pool. We'll talk about that later. And then yeah. uh, there was there was last one, of course, because of Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, and then look out of here. Give us, yeah. give us give us your opinion on Dogecoin. I personally think it's going to it's going to go down. And it's going to be a, a kind of a black mark for a little bit. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I I got a lot of heat for posting this tweet <laughs> yesterday, right? Uh, but you know, for me, I, I really like you know just posting my own opinions on things, just because I get to hear both sides, uh, whether people are triggered or not. I, I tend to learn from what happened. Uh, so yeah, I actually did happen to learn a ton about Dogecoin. It's just like you know when I was first getting into crypto, like it was one of the few projects I was being actively worked on. And it was super exciting, but then the founders all left, sold all their coins and hasn't been worked on for a while. And there's an unlimited supply, but uh, yeah, I mean, recently with the price increasing, it seems like there's been a lot more developers that are just, you know, taking on projects, trying to make Dogecoin more useful. And instead of being a store of value play like Bitcoin, they're trying to be more of a currency play. So it is, it is pretty interesting what does, you know, and I, I was trying to put those tweets because I just keep seeing like people, and some of my friends from like people that I haven't talked to in like like 10 years or something just say, should I buy Doge? And I'm just like, you know, no, you uh, should buy Storm you know, X. <laughs> no, I, I don't ever say that. But I mean, like, do you ever, I mean, like, do you know why you're buying this? Like, do you know what it is? I was just like, no, I just heard Elon, you know, posting, tweeting about it. And it seems like the Reddit army is behind it. But it's like, that's so dangerous. Like, you don't understand what it actually is. So, I mean. It, it, like if you understand the risks and you know you understand what the project is and why sort of this there's a drive for a need and that, that's completely fine right but most people are sort of just aping into this and that that scares the shit out of me because i've seen so many people <laughs> burned in the crypto industry uh and it just like especially 2018 right so many people got burned uh left a horrible taste in their mouth they said fuck crypto it's a scam and never coming back three years later you would think that a lot of people learned the lesson. Same thing happening all over again, except it's worse. Now we have like DeFi yield farm, like Ponzi schemes and stuff like that too. Like there's a lot of great like technology being built on DeFi, uh, like, you know, Compound, Aave, like Thorchain, like there's some really cool projects, but then there's like 90% scams that other people are promoting and stuff like that out there just to try to take advantage of the money that's coming in. And then it's just, it, it makes the whole sort of like industry, like it, it'll make, you know, if that crashes because of those scams, then it'll make all of DeFi bad, right? So that that that, that is what scares me. <laughs> Simon, me and you could talk about this for hours. We'll yeah. we'll get together, have some tacos and beer, and we'll we'll discuss the whole thing. So Sounds anyhow, good. so yeah. look, Simon, thanks for stopping by. You watching the video, thanks for watching the whole thing. Link in the description. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.